Happy People Cast. I'm Sophia Lemon, and today I have Nikki Yo of the Ava Solution with me. How are you, Nikki? I'm doing good, Sophia. I am. Um, my so my parents recently sold their house, which has been very exciting and a little bit sad at the same time. Um, the house closes at the end of the month, so this weekend my siblings and I, there's uh, six of us, are all heading to my parents' house with our families for one last hurrah, so to speak. July was um, 19 years that my parents have lived in that house, so definitely end of an era, some mixed emotions, but we are all well grown and moved out, so Empty Nest was like... 10 years ago <laughs> for them. <laughs> so um, they're looking forward to downsizing. They're going to do the snowbird life with um, Ugh, most lucky. of each winter in Mexico. Right? Ooh, my dad's Mexico. already got everything booked. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're Cancuners for sure. So of my siblings, four of us have two kids each. So it's about like ends up being close to 20 people when we all get together. So we're a party in and of itself. <laughs> and... Um, my oldest daughter, Evelyn, she's been going on for days now, like literally days, about how she's going to a party with her cousins, and it's going to be so much fun. Aww. There's going to be decorations, and um, she's we're working on her owls, so she calls them baroons instead of balloons. So she's <laughs> very excited. So it's been a good like bargaining chip. Like, okay, if you don't do this, we can't go to Grammy and Paul's house for the party. Oh, okay, 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 I'll do it. And she <laughs> straightens right up. So it's been, it's we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. Oh, that's remarkable. Teaching responsibility to toddlers. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> also interesting, like the progression of learning language. It's so mm -hmm. fascinating to me. <laughs> it's been, it's wild to have like that front row seat. My husband will come home from work and she'll just start like, like she does not stop talking. She goes from the time mm -hmm. she wakes up until after bedtime and she'll start asking him questions and like talking to him and he's like looking at me for translation i'm like how do you not know what she's saying it's like i don't i don't speak that language that's not english sorry <laughs> i'm like oh just me i'm just used to it cousins when they were little they're about a year apart and when the youngest would speak and no one could understand what he was saying we would literally look at his sister <laughs> mm -hmm. like and then she would tell us he was he yeah. said this <laughs> Jeez. yeah <laughs> So cool. Like, my parents were concerned about my brother when he was young because they couldn't understand what the heck he was saying. So they took him to the mm -hmm. doctor and the doctor said, he is fine. He's just talking too fast for yeah, his mouth. Tripping over it. Mm -hmm. So he was saying stuff. His brain was just moving along faster than his mouth was able to. And it's so funny because now his daughter is doing the same thing for like you listen to her you, you you might catch every other word when i ask my mom i'm like is that what marshall sounded like she's like yes <laughs> like okay cool good to know good to know that's so smart funny. cookie i bet mm -hmm. moving out of any sized house having had six kids in it at any one time yeah. is probably like holy moly it's quiet it's a lot and they have it's a full two-story house finished basement there's like four bedrooms two and a half bathrooms like it's a lot of space for two <laughs> two people so um i think it was more like a sticking point for my mom like just end of an era sad to leave <laughs> and while they were selling they'd take like while it was listed they had to take down all the personal photos and like all these items and like that was hard so it just seemed made it more seem more empty too which i think maybe just reiterated like this is a lot of house for any two people never mind two people in their retirement and it's a lot to keep up and all that kind of stuff so they're they're getting excited they've got the movers booked and they've got a nice two-week buffer between when they move into their their new place and when their house closes so at least they don't have to like it's not a, a big rush on for same day kind of thing so like i know well, when we bought exciting. our house we 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 didn't have anything really to move out of, but they moved out the same day that we were moving in. So we had to like sit around and wait and it was kind of awkward. And then we got here and like the old homeowner was like still locking up the house. And we're like, why do we have the keys if you're still in our house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so, it was so weird. That sounds like a bit of a mix up. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is not your house anymore. We paid you for it. Please leave. <laughs> that would be a little bit annoying. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. We had like our trailer and like two vehicles, and we're like oh, the roads busy. It was like a whole kerfuffle. Mm-hmm. But That's but you're there now. <laughs> but we're here now. It's been five years, so it's, it's water under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're gonna get to visit Mexico on a regular basis. <laughs> exactly, and have somewhere to stay for free. All to do with my flights. I'm sold. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, are all of your siblings and partners and kids going to be going to Mexico all at the same time? We, I don't think we'll be able to, which I think they're, <laughs> my parents are, like, at max only going to do, like, a two-bedroom so they can, like, Aww. stagger our visits. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, we don't have the room. <laughs> oh, no, it's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But that means mm-hmm. that they could have people with them for the entire time that they're down there, so they, they might want to just think about putting, putting some limits on there. Aid. Exactly. Yeah. We're... Yeah, you can't come down this week. <laughs> yeah, this is our alone week. Don't call, don't call us. No. This is, just no. We're not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> we're so busy down here. <laughs> Too funny. We're not going to be there and there's no spare keys. <laughs> oh, exactly. Man. Well, on my end, um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you have noticed, um, I've been taking some like holidays and stuff and the entire time I've been taking holidays I've been doing work yes <laughs> yes I have noticed that <laughs> and so like the big thing I started with was redesigning my dream photographer workbook which is for finding your dream photographer for your wedding um mm-hmm. because it was just uh, it was a horribly outdated and I really needed to sit down and update it because I started to update it and then it just sat there collecting dust so i have Mm -hmm. like fully updated it and then i went down the rabbit hole like updating a whole bunch of stuff um which also resulted in me getting all of the stuff sorted for this podcast (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but yeah my brain feels so much lighter like i went in and like deleted a whole bunch of email templates because there's just duplicate Mm -hmm. email templates and automations and quotes and contract templates and i'm just like oh, everything feels so organized good it's not all done and never will be but somehow i ended <laughs> up adding a whole bunch of new projects to my list that's not um, always the way yeah. that's great here's one thing done let me do five extra things now because of it <laughs> this gives me a great idea for something else i can do uh, <laughs> So I started creating like to do's and everything. And I told you yesterday that I next week, like when we're recording this next week, I'm going to not do any meetings um, Mm -hmm. except for my networking meeting. And I am not going to do any emails. Um, Mm -hmm. And you can give me heck if I go into my email. I was going to say, I'm going to hold you to that. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) Accountability. Um, yes. <laughs> you you hold me to it. I'm down for that. And I'm just going to work on the stuff that I want to work on. So I don't know if you noticed, but awesome. my calendar is already completely filled. Yes. For next week. I like flipped over to next week and I was like, did she not? She said she wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> it's like time block, time block, time block. Just no emails. <gasps> um, so funny. I'm just going to double check now that I am mentioning that, that I don't, I do still have like email time in there. So I could totally delete that. And take that out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. That's so funny. That's awesome. But yeah, I get, this is, people ask me what my hobbies are. And like, I'm like, I like work. Like I like, <laughs> I like to making work. stuff <laughs> and making things yeah. cool. And like making sure my branding is consistent. And like, I can spend <laughs> so many hours in Canva. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I am such a nerd. And oh my goodness. This, which probably leads into um, the topic of the day <laughs> for this episode <laughs> pretty well um mm-hmm. yeah because i can just work all the time all the time and then crash and so this episode is all about gratitude and mindfulness gratitude being making sure that you are taking a mental inventory of all of the things in your life that you have to be grateful for, because there are always Mm -hmm. things like that we really don't think about like, Oh my goodness, my body knows how to breathe on its own. Like that's a thing. There are people Mm -hmm. who can't do that. 
man, I am lucky to be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, and it's funny because I was driving home from a proposal the other day, which, by the way, went beautifully. And Aww. the bride-to-be was so surprised, so surprised that the entire session she was going, I just don't understand how you planned this. When did you Aww. do this? She's like, I always know where you are. Like, when did you go and get a ring? Like, <laughs> Aww, that's so sweet. It was so cute. Um, that was beautiful, but I was driving home and I was feeling pretty anxious. I'm mm -hmm. texting Kevin about it. Whenever I tell him I'm feeling anxious, he's always like, well, why? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> but it is making me think about why I'm feeling anxious more. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. But he, he did mm -hmm. ask me why. And I'm just, I'm just like stuck in a negative thinking yeah. loop where like mm -hmm. you think about one thing that's bad and stressful and then you think about something else that's bad and stressful and then mm -hmm. on to the next thing and so on and so yep. forth and do, like it's a darn hard to get out of a negative thinking loop it is like my goodness <laughs> it is super tough because it's like such a spiral of just continuing on with that and then everything's awful <laughs> mm -hmm. i know it's and it, just to get out of the loop is one thing, but as soon as you are stuck in it, then like if someone says to you, well, what's one thing in your life that's good? It's like nothing. Nothing is good right now. Everything, everything sucks. sucks. Everything is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Like everything starts looking terrible and like things that are not terrible all of a sudden are like just an annoyance. <laughs> like your dog needs yep. to go to the bathroom and you're like, what the hell? Why? It's always me that has to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Our poor dogs. <laughs> I know. They're good sports. <laughs> they really they really are. <laughs> yeah. Um, they do a lot. <laughs> but I figured this was probably a good place to start sort of at the top mm -hmm. of this whole podcast because mm -hmm. if you can master this stuff, being mindful and in the moment and taking a mental note of everything you have to be grateful for, then hey, you're in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so this episode is not all about like meditating for hours at a time, <laughs> because that's hard. But I have mm -hmm. been reading a new book. It's called Buddha's mm -hmm. Brain. And okay. a woman that I was photographing a few months ago told me about it. And I added it to my Amazon wish list, And then I got it. And it was not at all what I was expecting. She basically told me what it was and then gave me a little bit of information, which did not fully encompass the scope of this book. And I'm so far completely blown away. Have you heard of Buddha's brain? I have not. Okay. So like on the face of it, it sounds like it's about like Buddhism and like meditation and mindfulness and all that fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So the two authors, um, Rick Hansen and Richard Mendiu. So Rick Hansen mm -hmm. is a P PhD and uh, mm -hmm. Richard Mendiu, I'm, whose name I'm more than likely mispronouncing, is a an MD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that could give you a little bit of insight into what this book is actually about, which is all of the science around mindfulness. So okay. I, there's all sorts of studies out there that say, like, if you, you know, keep a gratitude journal, if you have a gratitude practice, that you will start thinking more positively. Like, studies okay. have shown this where they've, you know, taken massive groups of people and had them keep a gratitude journal and measured whether they felt better before or after they did this study. Mm -hmm. And there's all sorts of studies that say that if you meditate, you know, have a meditation practice that you know you'll become more emotionally stable i will say mm -hmm. um more resilient all of that fun stuff um so that's cool but they never really mm -hmm. get into the science of it and this book is totally 100 percent on the science of it which is that super is nerdy so which is why i like it super cool mm -hmm. i don't know if you are nerdy but if you want to check it out, I recommend it. I'm going to put a link in the show notes so that everyone can awesome. have a look at it and read. But right off the top of the book, um, 
I love how they said this. These are two people who went to like <laughs> science school and medical school and all of that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that Rick Hansen is in neuroscience. That is my neuroscientist. That is my guess. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but basically the first thing that they say at the beginning of the book is uh, don't be too hard on modern medicine because it is very young. And I read that and I was like, huh, that's interesting. That's a good point. Because we look at, you know, ancient medicine as like, what is the word? Barbaric <laughs> for the most part, mm -hmm. misinformed. Yeah not accurate yep. because obviously we have more information now than we did before right um but they really stress like trusting ancient wisdom um because well they kind of knew what they were doing like they didn't maybe know yeah about the insides of the body but in terms of like moderating their minds mm -hmm. you know there are groups of people that had these things down so mm -hmm. what I have gathered so far from this book is that meditation is not about emptying the mind or conquering the mind, but about recognizing what you're feeling first and then responding to what you're feeling second. So they start to mm -hmm. get into all of the sides behind that because yeah, most people like something happens and then they react. So yeah, the whole amygdala conundrum problem with our brain. Mm -hmm. makes it kind of difficult um, where yeah. the amygdala is what would m help you respond to um, an issue in your life, like an emergent issue, uh, which makes sense because 10,000 years ago, you might have to react rather quickly if, you know, a lion yeah. sprang upon you. <laughs> Fight or flight. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> today, we don't struggle with so many lions. Yep. Um, but we still have the same fight or flight response, thanks to our amygdala, because that hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot in 10,000 years, mm -hmm. um, to things that are not at the same level as, you know, lion danger, like stubbing your toe, mm -hmm. or your kid spilling a glass of milk, or yep. dropping an egg on the floor, which is something I have done before. Dropping an egg on the floor sucks. <laughs> my toddler dropped a whole carton of eggs on the floor trying to help oh, me unpack groceries a little while ago and that was oh no it was a desert deep breath moment for sure <laughs> yeah that was bring your amygdala yeah. <laughs> yeah i was that was a proud mom moment for me just like taking that deep breath and being like okay yeah at the time she was like two and a half and i was like she's trying to help this is her thinking yeah, she's helping me so put groceries cute. away deep breaths that's and I'm so like cute. all right well we gotta be careful with their eggs let's clean it up and she's just <laughs> smushing it all over the floor and I'm like you <laughs> mommy clean it up you off you go now. <laughs> but, yeah. no it's so that, so so true to like process before you do something <laughs> that's the annoying part about dropping an egg that's exactly why I hate it so much it's, it's like awful it's usually it like everywhere <laughs> I know and it will not you can't pick it up like there's no picking up no, the egg that is no. smushed on the floor no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but like with Kevin's kids, even like if they s knock over a cup of something, um, yeah. I think I have a pretty good panic response, like it, car accident, for example. But like with them, yeah. they're, they're like, I am so sorry. Like they're scared. And I'm just Aww. like, eh. I spill my drink all the time. If I put on a white shirt and I eat chips with salsa, I am going to spill salsa on my shirt. That's just what's going to happen. Guaranteed. That's so life. Yep. Heard I have that. spilled <laughs> many glasses of liquid in my time. <laughs> it's not a reason mm -hmm. to panic, but mm -hmm. we don't really have full yeah. control over our brains that way. So, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> it's funny because we like think of meditation and like Buddhism and monks and these people who like devote their entire lives to being quiet and contemplative and they're going to mm -hmm. have a buttload of control over their brains. Um, but you don't have to like <laughs> disappear to India to 
yep. you know, meditate or be mindful. Um, anyone can achieve it. And the big thing that I just keep reading and hearing, because I listen to a lot of podcasts and do like guided meditations and stuff, is this just practice, 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 mm -hmm. practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know your thoughts on gratitude and mindfulness. Ah, for for me, it's a big effort to adjust my perspective on things. And it was a big one for me when I had kids that <laughs> I always thought I was like super patient and calm, cool and collected. I've always like worked with kids. I have a ton of nieces and nephews. I've been around kids for like my entire life. And it's so different when you are just submerged in that 24 seven with no breaks and no time out, no time off. So um, that was an eye opener for me, for sure. Um, and I work very, very hard to have that, like, how am I feeling? And now let's assess. I'm fortunate that like, I'm a calm person in a crisis and a crisis can be like a first aid injury. It can be something's been dropped, something we've lost something. I like automatically go like, okay, let's mm -hmm. start from the beginning. Let's follow the steps. Let's make this work. And I expected to have that like immediately with raising kids. And that was not a thing. It's like, there's no patience. It's sleep deprivation. It's you're dealing, it's like groundhog day every single day over and over again. So it was like, it's a conscious effort for me to when there is like a big kerfuffle or a tantrums going on to like get down on my kids level and be like, okay, like this is how we're going to handle things. You're upset. Let's I can't have a rational conversation necessarily anytime with a three-year-old <laughs> anyway, but especially during a tantrum. So like, okay, you're upset. Mommy's not mad. We're going to do this together. Let's go fix the problem and like following this step. And I'm trying to introduce those techniques to her now so that they're easier for both of us down the road. Like even now we do like accounting trick. If she's like having a tantrum, just because like the TV's off or she dropped her cup or whatever, like just a tantrum that's kind of seems irrational in the grand scheme of things. Then I like get down on her level and I'm like, okay, count with mommy. And we count to three and we do it very slowly. And then we take a big, big deep breath in and we blow it out. And if she's still not like catching on, we'll do it a couple of times. And then I've like turned into a little game. We're like, okay, mommy's going to blow you away. And I go, <sighs> And then she pretends to fall all over and now she thinks it's hilarious and then she wants to blow me away. Um, so just to try and like bring her back into like what's actually happening. Like, okay, you spilt your milk. Let's clean it up together. Let's go get a towel. And here's a fresh cup of milk and, and you know, no harm, no foul kind of thing. And um, inside I might be like screaming my face off, but on the outside I've got to like keep it chill, like, they're little, they're little, little kids and they have no idea. They're, their concept of the world is so tiny and me losing my mind just makes them scared and upset. So that's not solving the problem anyway. And like the milk's already spilt. What are we, what are we gonna do about it? Like I gotta clean it up anyway. Might as well <laughs> not yell while I clean it up, right? So that's how I try to be mindful. And I think that shift for me in that like, I'm teaching it to to them makes it easier for me to practice it myself to know that like she's in such a mimic phase my three-year-old that everything I do she wants to do so to say okay I'm setting the behavior model for her and I'm teaching her these regulation skills and like how to handle things it makes it a lot easier for me to take a deep breath and be like <sighs> or like step out of the room and take a deep breath or like go scream into a pillow later on <laughs> if I need to. <laughs> um, and sometimes we'll, if it's like, if she's just having a tough day, we'll have like a scream day and I'll be like, okay, let's just scream it out. And we'll just all the three of us, we just scream our faces off. And then she thinks it's a hilarious <laughs> and we move on. Like you need that outlet. So that's really helped me be more aware is like, how is she perceiving this? How are my girls learning these things? What are they going to take to heart and remember as they grow up? Um, and that's made it easier for me, especially over the last year since having two of them. Um, and with the gratitude, definitely a perspective again for me is like, if I have back-to-back -to -back tough days or overly busy days and I don't get a chance to do anything for myself, which is often, um, it's very easy like, so to get stuck into that like 
big spiral hole of like everything's awful nothing is going right I hate everyone I hate everything everything's annoying and then I'll have like a a moment with my kids where they do something and I can like recognize like having the ability to work from home with my kids and work with people that I work with is a complete luxury and a privilege and I do these things so that I can be here with my kids so to get frustrated at at the whole world when ultimately like I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I'm doing the work I want to do. I'm working with the people I want to work with. I'm still being able to take care of my kids and be home with them and be flexible that I don't only have Saturday mornings to run my errands. I can go grocery shopping in the middle of the week when my kid's in tow and it's less busy and we can go out to lunch and have like fun sporadic days and it can be awesome. And that is such a privilege that I have and that I work really, really hard for. So that helps me to be more grateful and aware of this. I can still have struggles and it can still be hard. But in the day, it benefits me and my family in the long run. And it allows me to have everything that I want at the same time. So I do get to have my cake and also eat it, which I love. Because who doesn't <laughs> love cake? <laughs> Oh goodness. Right? It was, it was <laughs> my brother's birthday on Monday, and my mother got a cake. And mm-hmm. uh, I love cake. And it was chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so we were having it for lunch, and then they were leaving, and I had to go to Collingwood. And I just, I was like, what time is it? Like, I have to go. I can't have cake. And I'm like, mm. this is good for me. No, it's okay. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good, it was a good, unfortunate situation. Fortunate, unfortunate yeah. situation. I have yep. questions. Um, first of all, okay. Do the three of you ever do this screaming exercise in front of your husband? We did it once, and he was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> I was like, so "You don't. We had a day. You don't. You don't get it." <laughs> So he doesn't participate in the screaming. <laughs> no, generally not. I find the biggest tantrums tend to happen while he's at work. Because then once daddy gets home, it's like pure excitement from my kids. So uh, yeah. he misses a lot of the the tough times. And he's like, comes home, he's like, they're great. What are you talking about? I'm like, I'm going to go away next week for the whole week. So <laughs> have fun. <laughs> and I don't. Has do that, that happened? So no. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't think I ever go away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, oh I get drowned in the mom guilt. I can't leave my kids. I need, I need space, but not that much space. <laughs> yes. Um, um, honestly, a lot of what you're describing that you're doing with your girls sounds like exactly the stuff that I'm thinking about that people do not think of as mm-hmm. mindfulness, which is, okay, mm-hmm. before I just start throwing my own temper tantrum, why mm-hmm. am I feeling like this? And yeah. the... They also mentioned in the book, and I mean, I've read this in other books and listened to it in so many guided meditations, like, okay, look at how you're feeling and don't judge how you're feeling. And then in the book, yeah, they just put it in words that made so much more sense to me at the time, Mm -hmm. which was essentially, okay, so something happens, you're feeling a way, okay, rather than just continuing to feel that way about the thing that happened. Why don't you look at why you are feeling that way? Mm -hmm. And if you look directly at, okay, I am feeling like this, it says you'd be amazed by how much easier it is, how there's no feeling associated with looking at how you're feeling. Which I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like anytime I am feeling anxious, then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna think about why I'm feeling anxious. I'm like, "Mm -hmm." yeah, like I can look at it totally calmly and, not feel anxious about feeling anxious it's yeah. weird <laughs> it's so it's like weird out of body like you can completely separate and be like okay like completely objective with mm-hmm. how your emotions are going even though your emotions are completely subjective mm-hmm. that's very interesting for sure well and that is it feelings are very subjective another thing they mentioned mm-hmm. is something happens and then you have your feelings about it and your feelings about it are not necessarily about what happened, but about your entire life experience, everything that has happened to you that has influenced how you look at things. So like you Mm -hmm. come home and the house is a mess and you're angry at your family because the house is a mess. And 
Well, it doesn't actually matter that the house is a mess. No. Like, that's not... It's deeper. Like, the house being a mess is not a lion. Like, yeah, you are exactly. Going to survive that. So you don't have to have, like, a fight or flight response to... Which, getting angry about it would be the fight response to the house being a mess, right? So you're going to fight the lion or you're going to run away from it. You come home and the house mm -hmm. is a mess. You get angry at your family. You're fighting your family. <laughs> like, yeah, you would fight exactly. a lion. It's not necessary. You actually don't have to care that the house is a mess. And mm -hmm. through all of the research and reading I've done specifically on um, mindfulness and meditation, they say it over and over and over again. Like, you don't have to have feelings about anything that happens in your life. Mm -hmm. You could you could be in a bunker being tortured, and you don't have to have feelings about it. You don't have to be angry at the people doing it to you, and you don't yep. have to, like, respond to the pain. And that's a very difficult thing for people to grasp, because we're so emotional yeah. that mm -hmm. it's hard to say, okay, I'm experiencing physical pain. I'm gonna be calm about it heck no yeah but yeah there's plenty of people in the world who experience major physical trauma and come about out of it being like it happened i wasn't going to be able to change it like what am i going to do what are you going to do yeah i'd rather just be happy than be upset about whatever mm -hmm. um if this is a line of thinking that people are interested in i strongly suggest that you check out the book happiness and this is not the full title but happiness by matthew ricard he was if i remember correctly a photographer in france who gave up everything and became a buddhist monk um and there is a documentary on netflix featuring him and another author that i'm going to include in the show notes uh brother david steindl rast whose name i'm definitely mispronouncing, who has a book called Gratefulness on Prayer, um, which that is my next mindfulness read. Um, both of them are featured, Matthew Ricard, especially in this documentary, um, where um, I believe he is a video journalist, um, and I believe in South America, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and this journalist is taking Matthew Ricard to this like mindfulness retreat for these spiritual leaders in the world where they just get together and they talk about all sorts of stuff. Um, and that documentary is fascinating. I can't remember everything about it, but I highly recommend that people um, watch it and I'm going to include it in the show notes. Um, a link to it because it was even just watching the trailer for it in Netflix, you know, when you like hover over something and like it starts playing and the sound yep. starts. I, I believe it was this brother, David Steindl Rast, um, who was speaking and he's only in the documentary for like a few minutes. It's just someone at this retreat having a conversation with him and they brought the cameras up and started filming it. And like he ended up being the trailer. And I'm just like, <laughs> everything you say, I'm like, <gasps> whoa. <laughs> so. I highly recommend, highly awesome. recommend that you watch that. Put on my list. Another, another book that has been helpful for me is The Dance of Anger mm -hmm. um, by Harriet Lerner. I don't know if you've read that. It is an oldie but goodie, and it is so interesting to read. I think it was written in like the 1960s or something, um, and it reads pretty modern um, for being written in the 1960s and it is yeah. so applicable to daily life and basically i mean the dance of anger it's about dealing with your anger and the overarching idea of this book is if you are angry about something if you are angry at someone else about something that someone else is not the one with the problem you are the mm -hmm. one with the problem and that's not mm -hmm. that you are wrong and they are right but that you have feelings that you need to address and you cannot force someone else yeah. to change their behavior you can express to them why what they're doing and why it's hurting you and then you can take steps to make things better so basically it's mm -hmm. she talks about setting boundaries with people so if someone is constantly doing something to you that is irritating you 
you set a boundary. Okay, this thing that you're doing is irritating me. It's making me feel this way. Here's why. Yep. I'm not going to tolerate that in the future. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z instead. You can get on board with that or we can part ways kind of thing. Yep, 100%. <laughs> Which is amazing. And I can't even remember what podcast it was that I was listening to, but this guy was describing that it, his mother, he would have hours long conversation with her on the phone and it would just be negative, just her going on and on and on and on and on about negativity. And he finally set a boundary with her where he's like, mom, not having these negative conversations with you anymore. If you start into this sort of stuff, I'm going to tell you to stop. And if you don't stop, I'm going to hang up. <laughs> yep. And I guess he had to hang up on her a few times and then she stopped doing it. Or she got it. So yeah, <laughs> that's quite, quite interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I have are, one are an inter interesting thing. Oh yeah. I have one more yes. book that I highly recommend for people, mm -hmm. which is think indigenous by Doug Goodfeather. I got totally into like all sorts of indigenous spirituality and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. because I don't know, I watch documentaries and stuff, but anyway, mm -hmm. people find indigenous spirituality to be so hokey, um, in the way that it is described and like, yeah, it's, which I find very interesting because I think if, if we look at like Christianity, um, people mm -hmm. will describe stories in the Bible. Some people will describe stories in the Bible as if they were reality and they happened, which is fine yep. for that segment of the population. My opinion is, and I am not Christian, my opinion is that there are several stories in the Bible that people could very much learn a lot of lessons from. And if you accept them as stories and here are some things for you to consider in yep. life, you could use a lot of stuff out of the Bible without believing yeah. in anything in particular. Okay, well, let's mm -hmm. do the same thing with indigenous spirituality. Um, it's sure. all based on nature and mother earth and the planet will take care yep. of you and you take care of the planet and respect yep. animals and plants and all of that fun stuff. And if you take all of these teachings that sound really magical and hokey and all that fun stuff and accept all these stories that are passed down through like hundreds of generations, if you accept mm -hmm. all these stories as stories that you can learn from, then Holy moly, all of a sudden, it's a whole different take. You can, mm -hmm. you can look at life very differently and the world, which mm -hmm. is always what we want to do. Again, Absolutely. we are not experts. We just accept <laughs> that there are always things that we can change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been talking for a bit. So what thoughts do you have? <laughs> um, I think there's so many lessons that we can learn in like literally everything. And it's Especially from, like, when you talk about indigenous spirituality, like, I think that's the most legit, to be honest. <laughs> like, these are, these are oh. ancestral stories and lessons and morals. And, like, this is how we've, you know, lived and what we've learned. And, and it's things, like, that I can come back to parenting, too. Like, you look at, okay, how did I grow up? And what did I like there? And what do I want to do going forward? And you can look at that in business and in your friendships and relationships and setting boundaries. Like, I didn't like growing up that I was made to feel like this. So I'm going to make sure with my adult mm -hmm. relationships, I'm going to enforce this boundary. And I've had multiple people in my life as an adult that I've had to have those interesting conversations with and sometimes they've been taken yeah. really well and it's been I had no idea that I was making you feel that way and I'm gonna move forward and in, in not doing that and sometimes it's been twisted that they're the victim and it's very narcissistic mm -hmm. and you know and the outcome that you expect it would be in in that kind of a relationship so but it's something mm -hmm. that at least I can I can say okay I've set that boundary and I've made my mm -hmm. feelings known and I've told you that if this behavior continues then there is a consequence to that for my own well-being and that kind of thing. And then you fo the follow-through is probably the hardest part because I'm a, a FOMO kind of person. So there's always like, okay, well, now there's a sadness that something's been missing out and a relationship's been lost or whatever. But the grand scheme of things, if it's not a great relationship anyway, then it's not a benefit. It's not anything that's going to enrich your life. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to bring those lessons from past behavior and to boundary setting and recovering as a people pleaser, <laughs> which I definitely am. And um, I think it's so, in, I mean, definitely interesting 
to look at how things can change and how you can switch how you view things and how you react. Like how you said, like, it's not you being angry at someone is not their problem. That's your reaction. The behavior itself cannot be great. And the something that the, whatever it is that happened cannot be great from your perspective or their perspective or someone down the street's perspective, but how you react to it and how you carry that with you moving forward, I think is, is what's the most important aspect there. And when it comes well, yeah, to like, these mean, lessons too. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, no, just like lear- learning those lessons and those stories from whichever culture and whichever heritage and being able to just use it as, a, as opposed to like following it to the T as law, being able to mm-hmm. take that interpretation and apply that to your life and what you agree with and what you don't agree with and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that if you're angry or upset, you're the one with the problem. That's a tough concept for people to wrap their hand that is, their heads around because they, they look at the behavior as the problem because the behavior yeah. is what is upsetting them but mm-hmm. that other person does not have to care about and your feelings they don't <laughs> yeah i hate to say it they yeah. don't have to care they might not and any amount of yelling or screaming or stomping your feet or threatening to do whatever is might have mm-hmm. absolutely zero impact the problem is that you're struggling with your feelings. The problem yep. being that it's bothering you. Like if something is bothering you, that is enough of a problem for mm-hmm. you to be mm-hmm. justified in changing things. Like if you are mm-hmm. feeling something, your feelings are valid and should be addressed. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you're the person who has to address them or fortunately, yeah. but we always look to other people and things to solve problems for us. Yeah. Yeah. All of this is all about being present with your own mind and yep. body and not judging and observing and then mm-hmm. deciding how you're going to react. So that whole recognize the feeling first and mm-hmm. respond to the feeling second. Don't react immediately because it's just not effective. So I had yeah. five ideas um for ways Mm -hmm. to become more mindful and more practice a little bit more gratitude in your life um and i welcome you nikki to comment on all of these so obviously first meditate meditate Mm -hmm. and i say that because i do not meditate all the time um Mm -hmm. but i find that when i am in a negative loop for any period of time. If I then start meditating for even just a few days, it's almost Mm -hmm. an immediate change. Like I am Mm -hmm. calmer, Mm -hmm. like noticeably calmer, more patient, more able to respond to things rather than react. Like almost if I'm having a tense conversation with someone, I can actually think before I start using a tone or, you know, saying things that I don't need to say or or putting on that person that how they're talking to me is upsetting me I can go I can think in my own head they're upset about something (laughs) yeah so maybe ask them why they're upset first before you start going leave me alone um (laughs) (laughs) and there's a zillion ways to meditate um it is not about sitting in a dark room with your eyes closed and your legs crossed and your hands in your lap going Mm -hmm. ohm for Mm -hmm. an hour at a time. I try to get an hour of meditation in a day and that does not all happen at once. (laughs) I do a little (laughs) bit when I wake up, I do a little bit in the afternoon and I do a little bit before I go to bed. Um, Mm -hmm. And just that quiet time to myself is super it's huge beneficial for me because if Mm -hmm. i'm going for too long without sitting down and being quiet i get very not necessarily anxious but also like i've had 70 coffees and i'm angry about it like (laughs) yeah (laughs) you should see me on a friday when i'm like 
or even a Thursday. At the end of the week, if it's been busy and I'm doing like my social media scheduling, which is generally the last thing I do in the week, as I am approaching the last few items that I have to do before I'm done, I start getting like tense and like, oh my goodness, I want to be done already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meditating helps me avoid that. And I do guided meditations, as I have mentioned. I do some guided meditations on Apple Fitness Plus because they have some pretty cool meditations on there, which like, like they have like kickboxing and cycling and running and mm -hmm. weight training and core and all that fun stuff. They have that, but for meditation. So there's like, like four cool. um, people who will lead meditations and they just talk and there's music in the background and mm -hmm. you listen and follow the instructions and it's anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes awesome. so that's an interesting option the one app that i'm using a lot is called balance and i'll include mm -hmm. the link in the show notes it is great <laughs> um and it has all sorts of like guided meditations and like these immersive meditations where it's music or a sound like um, leaves in the trees blowing in the wind or like mm -hmm. a river or waves or a train and um, it'll vibrate your phone along with the sounds so that oh, you can like cool. hold onto your phone and listen to the sound and it like distracts you from yeah. thinking about stuff. And Very then cool. it also has all sorts of sleep stuff. So meditations for sleep where you put it on, you get in bed, you listen to it while you're going to sleep. Do you meditate at all? Is that a thing um, that happens in your life? Not regularly. I have, I have, and I do every so often. I don't do it as a regular occurrence, and I would like to. It's a matter of available time yes. and having to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to like gauge, okay, do I want to have, and I, I mean, I guess you could, maybe I do. If I wake up before my kids and I have my 20 minutes where I drink my coffee in absolute silence. Mm -hmm. That could be a form of meditation for sure. Self-reflection. Yes. Sometimes what I do if I'm feeling particularly anxious on my on Fitbit on my watch, there's um like a breathing yeah. exercise type thing. And it's like you breathe as the circle starts small and it gets bigger, and then you exhale mm -hmm. as it gets smaller again. So and they're like anywhere from two to five minutes. And it's something that I can do if like chaos is unfolding in my house. I can like close the door to the bathroom and just like sit and watch the circle and like take some deep breaths and for me yeah. like the breathing exercises is a great is a good calming tool for, for me to like mm -hmm. calm my temper and calm my heart rate and like i can do it quick and i can get back into it and sometimes it helps and sometimes i'm still a little bit high strung but yeah little bits that i can grab for sure it's funny that you mentioned the breathing exercises because I've heard this before from a, a Chinese medicine specialist that I've worked with, Chris Savage, who is mm -hmm. out of Collingwood, if anyone is interested, um, that he he has told me before, if you're anxious, have do long exhales. So you breathe in and mm -hmm. then just prolong your exhale and that'll help. And of course, you hear that from a Chinese medicine specialist and people are going to be like, "Uh, okay." Yeah, oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it works at home. Or like <laughs> or you talk to your therapist or something and they're like, "Well, breathe and here's how you should breathe." And we think like, "Oh, okay. I know how to breathe." Yeah. <laughs> okay, you know what? This Buddha's brain book is so good because they explain the science of it. So, they've said mm. longer exhales. Yeah. Result in your brain literally chemically calming you down. So there you go. Long, yep. uh, long exhales. That's helpful. Yeah. Also drinking your coffee in the quiet in the morning. Um, there's actually, there's actually a meditation in the balance app for that. Is there? Nice. Okay. Yes. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> Perfect. Um, That's what I need. Yeah. But is it, I mean, if it's not about, you know, again, being in silence and clearing your mind and, thinking no. about nothing, right? It's about focusing on one thing at a time. Yeah. So you're sitting there in silence and you're smelling your coffee and you're yeah. sipping your coffee and you're feeling the warmth of the coffee on your lips and on your tongue. And then you're yeah. tasting the flavors and you feel the warmth on your hands and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's experiencing the entire feeling of what is happening right now. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, so the next one Very is... Cool sitting in silence. 
<laughs> she's just like super restorative, I think. Or I guess, yeah, well, we'll get to that later. But I mean, I think outdoors yeah. and the same sort of thing. So you're listening to like the wind in the trees and you're smelling yeah. all the smells outside, which I mean, if you think that out the outdoors does not smell different, you are wrong. Like go outside and start smelling it's stuff. different. Start thinking about Depending it. Depending on where you are. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. Multiple mm -hmm. times recently, I've been like walking places and I've been like, well, oh, it's a powerful smell. Like <laughs> plants like that yeah. I wasn't expecting. Also feeling the breeze. So literally feeling like the breeze on yeah. your face or where are you feeling it on your arms or what? Like right now I am enjoying the breeze from the fan across the room because the studio is very yeah. hot. <laughs> <laughs> Or sit in a dark room with, like, the blinds closed in silence, yeah. turn a fan on, and just, like, be quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I imagine this is a thing that is hard to do in your house. It's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Not only <laughs> do I have two small kids that are very loud and, like, to practice their lungs... Being in an old house, it means my walls are very thin. So even when and I have a moment to separate myself, I'm not really separate. So yeah, I hear yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. There's also listening mm -hmm. to music. I have heard that yes. one of the best things for mental health is just, and positivity and happiness is finding moments of awe. So like, mm -hmm. you know, you're standing on top of a mountain and you're just like, holy moly, look at like that landscape that's flipping beautiful or a sunset or whatever. Yeah. But how often does that happen for you for music? Cause like if I'm driving or these dance parties that we talked about earlier, yeah. like you're listening to some really good music to the point that it's making you dance or like whatever in your mind yeah. is like, your brain gets so consumed in music like pretty easily. It could be love pretty music. cool to like follow along with music and like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I take it you do that. Maybe with the girls too, I, which would be I really do. good. I do, yeah. And like my, <laughs> my family, we're all, we're big music people. Like some of my, my favorite memories growing up have soundtracks attached to them, like uh -huh. because of this, which is awesome. <laughs> and even like... I think last week I heard a song on the radio and I immediately called my sister when it was done. And I was like, you have to listen to this song. Like, you don't understand. Listen to it right now. <laughs> and she like pulled it up and then she called me back. She's like, oh my God, that was so good. And I was like, hey, right? <laughs> like, it's one, it's like, you hear like just that song and you get goosebumps. Like, that is what I love about music. And you can like feel it in your chest. And for me, it's like so therapeutic that if I'm having a bad day, I know exactly what artist and what song I want to listen to. That's just going to like, <laughs> either ride my bad wave or like help to slowly take me back out, which is awesome too. Um, also, if you're Canadian and you're into music and this is not a music podcast, but I totally suggest that you listen to it if you're Canadian, because I betcha there's going to be moments during this podcast that you're going to be like, Oh my God. Yeah, I know that. Um, Taggart and Torrance, which is, <clears throat> um, Jonathan Torrance, um, from Street Sense and also Jono Vision. I am not sure if you are too young for both of these things, Nikki, but he was big on the CBC back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jeremy Taggart, who was the drummer for Our Lady Peace. And they're just mm -hmm. really good friends and they're both Canadian and they just talk about Canadian stuff. And they awesome. will have like music eras where they like you know, episode 90 is about 90s music and they just start playing like songs from that era nice. and like they'll start playing the songs and i'm just like oh my god yeah. <laughs> like, i remember that i haven't thought about that song in like <laughs> 20 years <laughs> like it's hilarious it's really good that's awesome but anyway very cool totally unrelated to anything but it's a great <laughs> going for a walk is number four mm -hmm. uh, i find like, I usually listen to a podcast when I go for a walk. Um, mm -hmm. But man, do I ever feel better after I go for a walk? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, if you get time to do I that am, at any pace. <laughs> you, honestly, the walk, I like joke to my husband that going for a walk with the kids is my way of not parenting. 
<laughs> like yeah. it's like oh my god I'm going crazy Kate we're going for a walk let's go everybody's out it's and right my up. youngest is like just stepping so she goes in the stroller and my oldest is like running around checking out everything and it's like we're gone for like two two and a half hours and we're just like we're just walking and like it's a slower pace than it used to be when I just had one in a stroller and I could just like motor with the dog and um as long as it's not too hot Kane still comes with us which is awesome and uh keeps the girl safe from any prying eyes and uh no it's i love it it's especially like on a nice day and i live right across from georgia bay so to have like that breeze flowing through and just be comfortable and like you hear those nature sounds and that like so, like the wind on your face and it's be that appreciation of like i live in a beautiful place like i'm very fortunate to have the ability to walk across my street and there would be this whole trail system around the lake like not a lot of people have that and um to just be able to go exploring and having fun and get some exercise while also just having that fresh air and like you feel like you're doing something and you kind of are but you're also you're also not which is awesome too it's very relaxing Mm-hmm. Definitely. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay, unrelated to like anything that we're talking about, but you mentioned birds and there is this app that Kevin found that my entire family is now nerding out about. And I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I'll put a link in the show notes it's by Cornell Labs. It's a bird sound um, app. And so you can mm-hmm. hit the record button in the app and it starts listening and it'll tell you what birds it's hearing. Oh, cool. That's awesome. It's super cool. You will be astonished by the number of birds that will pop up on that thing. Like, we're I finding bet. birds, like, hearing birds that we didn't know that we had. <laughs> 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 Ooh, it's cool. Um, okay, so the last item on my list was reading some reflective books. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I'm just reading buddha's brain right now and i Mm -hmm. listed a few other books earlier um do you ever get time to read i i have been trying to carve out some time i don't have as much time as i used to before i had kids i could burn through a book Mm -hmm. in like two three days and that's working a full-time job still like yeah i my degree's in english i love to read i have (laughs) behind me is like a condensed version of the books that i still have i interned at a publishing house and it was like oh we have overstock books take them home so like it was like paradise for me (laughs) it was it was like the best three-month job i've ever had in my entire life (laughs) (laughs) um so I've been trying to make a conscious effort to carve out more time to read. And sometimes that's mm-hmm. like a chapter before bed. Sometimes that's, I like literally will leave my house and go like once my husband gets home and go just sit in a parking lot and like have a coffee and read my book in silence. Um, but right now I'm just doing like fluff reads that can just kind okay. of, you know, those, those beach reads. I bought one book last summer at Chopper's Drug Mart and I was like oh this is like the perfect beach read and then I got home and I was like when do I have time to beach read with a newborn (laughs) and a two-year-old that is silly what am I thinking so anyway I'm getting to it this year um this year (laughs) this year it's been a year it's literally sat on my bookshelf for a year I have a whole pile of like to be reads and I love Mm -hmm. bookstores of any kind they're like that's my happy place and (laughs) I kept buying books when I was having kids and not realizing Mm -hmm. that I don't get a chance to read or when I do get a chance to sit down and read now I fall asleep because I'm tired so mm-hmm. it's been an interesting um I've read a couple really good ones in the past um mm-hmm. what's one that I really loved was uh looking at it on my shelf Oprah Winfrey's uh what I know for sure so this ah. was like oh my goodness like probably pushing 10 years ago eight nine years ago And Mm -hmm. they're basically just collections of, like, little stories and, like, anecdotes from her life where she talks about, like, this is a lesson I learned and this is what I know specifically about life and about my reaction to life and what I want from my life. And it was very – she talked about, like, gratitude journals and being mindful and and, um, shared some really, like, tragic and also then other interesting stories from her past because she's had a very tragic and interesting life. Mm -hmm. Um. And it was very, like, it's one of those books that when I finished and I closed, I was like, huh. And then I spent a year, like, telling every single person I knew, like, read this book. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Very interesting. 
I have not read that, so I am writing that down. Do you have That's any like one. nonfiction? Like I, I said reflective books, but when you said beach reads, I was like, you know what? Actually escaping into something else for a period of time could mm-hmm. probably be quite quite delightful. And I have it is, it is. <laughs> I have a couple of ideas myself, but I would love to hear from you if there are any nonfiction. Yeah. Or sorry, um, fiction. Fiction books? Let me let me look at my shelves. I read what's something I've read recently. One of my favorites that I read just after university, so this is not recent, is um All the Light You Cannot See. And I think it's being made into a movie currently. Okay. And it's set in um World War II German occupied France. And it toggles back and forth between this um young girl and her father and she she's blind and a German soldier that's been drafted. So in, against his will. And he's, um, he works in there, like not works, but like he's a uh, specializes in like radio communications and stuff. So he goes in and like fixes all the communications that they've been brought down. And so it goes back and forth between their perspectives during this. And it's very, it's a very poignant read and, um, very interesting take because you don't, mm-hmm. I don't think you see it often from the perspective of a, of a German soldier that did not want yeah. to be in the war. Um, and uh, anyway, another one of those books, books that I closed and was like, oh my goodness. And having been minoring in history and I have a deep love of history and historical fiction and historical nonfiction, um, just a very, very interesting take mm-hmm. on that whole time period and pers- perspective. And we've talked about perspective a lot so far in this episode and that's one of those things that um to see different reactions and things and what's another really good one i just finished um little fires everywhere which they also made into a hulu series um starring reese witherspoon and carrie washington who are both wonderful i have not watched the show yet because i wanted to read the books the book Mm -hmm. and uh it's about this very upper class family in Cleveland and then this almost impoverished mother and daughter that kind of travel from place to place and she's an artist and how their lives intersect and more on perspective what this upper class Mm -hmm. woman thinks is life and standard and everything's very black and white and you either are right or you're wrong and you fit into the mold or you don't and if you don't then you are less fortunate and you need pity and all of these things and like she couldn't possibly ever be wrong and then the perspective of everything is open to interpretation and you don't understand what someone goes through until you've lived that yourself. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Those sound good. They are good. Those are my two recommendations. (laughs) (laughs) So my two recommendations would be the James Harriet books. Um, I cannot remember the titles, but it's basically a series of like story. He was a vet in like the 1920s in England, I believe. Mm-hmm. in the uk um and he just tells stories about working with animals and like mm-hmm. meeting his future wife and marrying his wife and it's just his writing is very good and funny and heartbreaking and i cry a lot when i read his stuff because there's like all of this stuff about like mm-hmm. people loving these animals and losing these animals and yeah you know and then there's you know all of the silly things that vets did back in the day with the information that they had and we would not do that now today we would do this and (laughs) yeah it's it's very good he was a very good writer um the other recommendations i would have are the poultry collective and republic of dirt and i will include the link in the show notes um because i cannot think of the author's name off the top of my head but um Basically, both books have four narrators, I think. So there's this woman who, unbeknownst to her, inherits a farm. She shows up at the farm and comes across these three characters. So one is an old farm hand. One is the, like, 20-year-old disaster who lives with his mother across the street. And then there's this 12-year-old girl. Um, Mm -hmm. And it ends up being, like, a story following this girl but like all of the stuff that's happening all over the place and it's each chapter is narrated by one of these people so it Mm -hmm. it'll like tell the same like like 
afternoon of events from like in chapter one from the woman's perspective then from the farmhand's perspective then from the 12 year old's perspective and it's so funny to see how they like describe things differently and mentally mm -hmm. judge each other and like <laughs> it's really funny and fits in pretty well with the ridiculously happy stuff because it's so entertaining but all of these situations are like oh my god that's terrible like <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe that's happening but it's written so hilariously they're very good. Like, I almost want to go back and read those again because they're just so entertaining. But anyway, we probably should wrap up this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a ridiculously happy moment? I do. Um, yesterday morning, I went for a walk with my girls. And um, oh. my <laughs> oldest is, uh, like, I said, I like her concept of things is so little so she's amazed by literally everything like her favorite thing to do is to go and throw rocks in the lake and so we walk down <laughs> yeah. the town docks and she's like looking for these like perfect rocks and then as soon as she gets one she gets all excited and like this huge contagious <laughs> giggle and then she like patters over to the edge of the dock and like heaves it in it splashes and it's like this huge excitement and then my youngest is in the stroller and she's just like oh, clouds and like just completely amazed <laughs> And um, she's telling me what everything is, and my oldest is, and they've, in, at the Midland Town Docks, they've got, like, the heritage signs, and um, for, like, Samuel de Champlain, and, like, it used to be all railroads for the, the, um, the Green Depot and things like that. So she can't read, but she thinks she's telling me these stories, so she goes up to the pictures, Aww. and she's just gabbing away and telling me these stories, and it's just the cutest, and it's just watching her be so, like, immersed in how incredible life is, is just, it makes me smile every time. Kids cool. know how to be mindful. They do. <laughs> they really, really do take a lesson for sure. <laughs> so my ridiculously happy moment comes from a member in my networking group. I was sending out emails two days ago, like all of my like prep emails for everyone before our weekly meeting. And then I get a message from one of our members. Her name is Paige, and she is fantastic, and this morning I told her intuitive and also psychic because I, as mentioned, have been experiencing some anxiety and negative thinking loops, and I happened to be in one of those moments immediately before she sent this message, which was like, you do so much, and like, you keep up with all of it so well, and thank you for everything that you're doing, and I had to text her back and be like, Paige, you almost made me cry. <laughs> Speaking of gratitude, part of gratitude is telling people when they yes. have done something that has made you smile, because that can have a massive impact on someone's day. That can completely mm -hmm. turn around someone's day. So more of that. All right. Absolutely. Where can people find you, Nikki? I am on Instagram and Facebook at The Ava Solution and also online at uh, theavasolution.com. We love to keep things in line with the brand. So super easy to track down. Excellent. Okay. And I'm Sophia Levin and I photograph ridiculously happy people and you can find me on Instagram at ridiculously happy people and on Facebook and Pinterest at Sophia Lemon and also at sophialemon.com. And thank you so much for making the time for this episode of Ridiculously Happy People Cast. And we hope that you feel inspired to live a little more kindly, more confidently, and more ridiculously happy today. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave a review in your podcast app of choice. FYI, Kevin is the first person who gave us a review. Yay! <laughs> for I don't, don't even know if it's showing up but I made him go look at it. He's like, oh, I just gave you a rating. I'm like, oh, awesome. <laughs> Your feedback and Kevin's feedback means the world to us <laughs> and helps spread this ridiculously happy movement. Uh, we also invite, invite, invite you to join our community on Facebook at Ridiculously Happy People. And remember that happiness is contagious. So who you know who can use a smile, share this podcast with them and bring a little bit of extra sunshine to their day. And thank you for listening. And we will see you next time.